This is probably the smallest and lightest HF antenna I have ever seen. So if you're planning on hiking up to a summit, this may be just what you were looking for to round out that QRP kit. Thanks for stopping by the House of Ham. I'm Bob WB7W, and today we're going to look at the smallest HF QRP antenna you cannot buy. Okay, that is not completely true, but this tiny NFED half-wave QRP antenna designed by Adam, K6ARK, is only available as a kit. So you'll have to build it yourself, and you can actually build it in one of three configurations. This one, as I said, is an NFED half-wave, so it uses a 49 to 1 Unon but you can also build it as a 9 to 1 for an NFED random wire or 1 to 1 ballon for a dipole like the one I built in my last video. There's a link to that video in the description as well as the card above. Now this NFED half wave is cut for 40 meters, but it will also work on 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. It is a QRP antenna that can handle 5 watt CW and digital and 10 watt single sideband. Now, I use this with my KX2 and my ICOM 705 and my QCX mini transceivers, but it should work fine with pretty much any QRP radio. I really love how small and light this thing is. It easily fits in my KX2 bag along with the radio and the key. This makes for a very small and light kit for a park or summit activation, or just to hike along a trail where you want to do a little radio while you're at it. Now, the kit comes in this little bag, and it comes in four different models. The standard comes with either a male or female BNC, and there are also 20 watt models as well. Now, this one here is a standard with a male connector. The 20 watt versions are basically the same, but come with a larger 82 43 toroid along with the 50 43. Now, the build isn't too difficult, but the parts are pretty small, so you need to keep that in mind. There is one surface mount capacitor. This thing is really small. It's smaller than a grain of rice. Now, Adam provides a good video on how to build these, so I won't go over how to do it here. I've linked to his video below, and you might as well get the details right from the designer. Now, as with any wire antenna, you need a way to support it. And if you happen to have trees nearby, you can just hang it up in a tree. Now, if not, you'll need something to hold it up. And since I don't have many trees in my area, I'm going to mostly use this Soda Beams Tactical Mini. And I had to choose between the Tactical Mini and the Carbon 6. Now, I liked how small and light the Carbon 6 was, but I wanted something a little stiffer at the top to support a dipole as well. So the Tactical Mini was my choice. Now, I 3D printed a few little items to make using the Tactical Mini a little easier. First, I made this little guy that sits over the top section, and the wire can either be attached to it or you can run it through for an inverted V configuration. Next, I made this guide plate that sits at the top of section two. And last, I made these little guys here that allow you to easily tension the lines. Now, the STL files for all of these are available for free on Thingiverse, and I provided links below if you want to 3D print these for yourself. The setup is really quick. The only other things you're going to need are a few stakes and some thin line. Now, I use this 1 8 inch paracord, and the first thing I do is put the stakes in the ground about 3 to 4 feet away from where I want the mast to be. I put the guy ring on first, so I don't have to run it down the whole pole once it's erected. Next, I put this little guide part at the top and run the antenna wire through it like this for an inverted V configuration like I'm doing here. And the last thing for the inverted V is to tether the far end. After that, you can attach it directly to the radio and you're ready to roll. Now, Adam provides this little piece of tubing to make a loading coil that you put about six feet from the feed point. So why do you need this? Well, the answer is you may not, but likely if you cut your wire for 40 meters, the resonant point will be a little too high up on the 20 meter band and even further up on the 15 and 10 meter bands. And this can help with that by adjusting the number of turns as well as how far away from the feed point. Keep in mind that this isn't something exclusive to this antenna. It is really something that is most likely going to apply to any NFED half wave that you are trying to use on multiple bands and you don't want to use a tuner. Now I may do another video in the future just on adjusting the tuning. Now if your experience differs, 
please leave a comment below so others can benefit from your knowledge. This brings me to a very important part of my channel. I want this to be a community experience, not just me blathering on. A lot of value to others come from viewer comments. And I want you to feel free to participate and provide constructive and respectful criticism. I will never delete a comment that tells me I'm full of crap, so long as it's respectful. I will also try to respond to every comment, so if you have questions, please ask. Okay, enough about that. Now, although the K6ARK isn't the only NFID half-wave out there, it is most certainly the smallest. But if you want something easier to build, there is also the QRP Guys version, as well as Jason KM4ACK's NFID half-waves. Now, these are both rated for 20 watts, but are a bit larger. And aside from size, they will all perform about the same. Both the QRP Guys and Jason's versions are easier to build, since the parts are considerably larger. Now, as of this recording, the KM4 ACK version is out of stock, but you can also make your own pretty easily. There are plenty of plans on the internet. So, if you want an ultra-portable, multi-band HF QRP antenna, you cannot go wrong with the K6 ARK NFIT half-wave. It performs well and is fairly easy to set up, with either some nearby trees or a collapsible mask like the Soda Beam's Tactical Mini. There is no magic here other than the size and the weight. At the end of the day, it's still just an NFIT half-wave. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want to know when my next video comes out, please hit that subscribe button. Till next time, 73s.